report on June zone case annexation and rezoning request. The second and third go ahead, sorry. <laughs> the second and third higher cases involve the same <coughs> actually involve four pieces of property between West Main and West Park, Mountain Bank Mid Road. The first case is going to be the annexation case because the highway commercial property is within the current within the county limits. Um, they would like to annex that into the city and rezone that particular piece of property with three or ten pieces of property, single family um, residential, highway commercial to your R6M, which is your multifamily residential for an approximate 48 unit apartment complex. Just keep in mind that these parcels are within the gateway, so the gateway architectural and other standards will apply. <coughs> To add on uh, to what Ms. Tyler was saying, I have had a chance to speak with, uh, <coughs> with Matt, our planning and zoning administrator, and he's spoken extensively with representatives from uh, Peach Street Housing, uh, and they, in fact, are represented here tonight, as is uh, Scott Alderman, who is the uh, realtor for the property. So they're present to answer any questions that you may have. Essentially, what we've got here is, and these gentlemen can correct me if I'm wrong, but a tax credit housing project similar to what was built over on uh, West Stanfield Street, uh, specifically at the intersection of West Stanfield and North Union. And that was a, uh, a, a managed income apartment complex, um, as is this uh, project. So do you want representatives to come speak? Do you all have a representatives who you have to speak tonight? Uh, a little bit about what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I understand it's a work session, but so I'll keep it brief. But we, we do have some information we'd like to provide you all um, as we just begin to work through this process over the next month. So <coughs> the, the larger piece of paper there is just as a is a survey to kind of give everyone a locational understanding of what we're speaking about. Uh, the entire uh, acres that we're talking about rezoning or annexing slash rezoning so 6.438 acres uh, a portion of that is already in the city um, the portion here as you can see on the survey the, the, the portion closest to um, old union road is not currently uh, in the city uh, the other two and a half of parcels are in the city In general, our, our original uh, understanding was uh, that we should rezone all parcels to, uh, I think it's R6M, or RM6, uh, which is the multi-family ordinance. Uh, but it's my understanding there may be some concern with that because I believe that uh, mobile homes are a permitted use um, inside of the RM6 zoning. So if the council, if the mayor council would prefer, uh, we, we, we would consider just instead of um, doing the R6 and RM6, rezoning to RP, which does not allow for mobile homes. So in the event that uh, the city did agree to rezone the property, that mobile homes would not be allowed to use with the end use zone. If the uh, planning and zoning request is successful, when will the application be filed? The application will be filed with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs uh, on June 11th. Uh, we will receive word back from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs whether or not our application was successful, uh, probably in October, maybe November, but, but most likely October. Um, at that point, we will, we will be looking at applying for permits uh, next May, so a year from now, and beginning construction uh, probably in June. And just as a question, not to speak out of turn, this is really one for the property owner. I, I know that residential professional is a less intensive use than highway commercial. Would there be any desire on the part of the property owner to have a condition placed whereby uh, the use would reverse to CH if the application was not successful? Scott? Thank you, Jonathan. I'm Scott Alderman, 4803 Springbrook Drive, VR. 
I represent the property owner, Jan Butler. You know, I've been working with these guys uh, for a couple months on this project. Your question uh, refers to whether the owner would agree to have the property revert to CH if the project is not built. Is that correct? Correct. Would you be asking the question, presuming that that piece has been annexed into the city? Yes. If it reverts, I want to make sure I get this right. You're not talking about the annexation reverting. Correct. The reason being, RP is a less intensive use than out of commercial. And I just did not know if the owner might want to retain that higher standard of uh, marketability on the property. Or else have to go back, you know, do another case right. later on. I'm not discussing that with Ms. Butler, uh, Jonathan. I'll be glad to. Uh, Throw it out there. Yeah, I, I don't think we have any issue with that concept. Uh, I can tell you this just for the record. We've been trying to sell that property for a number of years. <clears throat> the interest from the market in commercial development there has been virtually zero. It's because of the interchange development, if I'm not sure. <clears throat> Well, if I had to guess, I would say it's because there are still undeveloped commercial tracks along 122, and that's where the businesses are going to go first before they start to spread down Union Road to this side. Of success of the application. 
if we assume that there's roughly 70 submitted, I think a little more, 70 applications submitted statewide, uh, they're probably going to award a little over 30 of those, so nearly 50% of the applications. I would say our success rate um, since 2010 is, 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 as far as the number of applications that we submitted and ones that we've been awarded, it is greater than 50 percent, probably closer to 70 in the state, just in the state of Georgia. How many others do you have in, or are you anticipating filing this round? We're, we're, we're anticipating filing one more. The state divides their resources uh, in the qualified allocation plan, which is how the tax credits are allocated every year, um, in between uh, rural resources and urban resources. So if the state has uh, $24 million in allocating authority, it's really $240 million, but I won't get into the semantics of it. 35% uh, of those tax credit resources uh, automatically go into rural communities, and the remaining <coughs> remaining ones uh, can go into urban areas. <coughs> we would be part of the, the rural pool going for the 35% of the resources. But in general, rural developments are smaller than, than larger 120 unit urban developments. So at the end of the day, the number of developments funded in rural and urban is about the same, but the number of units created in urban areas is larger. Just to add uh, to what the developer has stated, uh, there was a few years ago with respect to the existing uh, housing, uh, tax credit housing projects in, in the city, a, a policy developed uh, to require uh, a separate set of public hearings and endorsement uh, process. Um, and because the uh, developers are not seeking the endorsement of the council, through the form of a letter, uh, that policy is um, not triggered. And that was an opinion received by uh, our planning and zoning administrator because Velasta has a similar policy. Uh, and in fact, the public hearing process and public input process is uh, overlaid with the planning and zoning process right now. So um, the property, adjacent property owner will still be notified via letter will have a posting on the property as well uh, over the next month. There will be opportunities for question and answer. The Planning Commission will meet for a work session as well as a uh, full Planning Commission meeting which will take place on the 31st for members of the public before it comes to the Council on the 2nd for uh, a potential uh, up or down consideration. So uh, there will be several opportunities for the public to, to voice their concerns uh, should they have them and opportunities for the council to respond to those. Can I back you up real quick? Um, the 60 percent, can you go over that one more time, those numbers? Certainly. So <clears throat> just as far as like who our tenant base would be? Well, so I understood that the federal money comes through the agreement that the tenants are, there's some sort of a, a income requirement. Certainly. Can you, can you tell me about that again? Sure. So we're in the Valdosta MSA, mm -hmm. and that's how they determine area median income. Okay. So let's just to kind of break it down in, into how, how it would function in the real world on our property. Um, if you were going to live in a three bedroom and you, there were four <laughs> people in your family, you could make $29,220. So that 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 is the the upper level. Yeah, you could make more than that and still live there. That is correct. <clears throat> However, right now we're, we're proposing 48 units. We can only increase that so much just due to density. But what we're what we are hoping to do, we're working with a market analyst right now, if we are able to actually add some additional units above the 48, just to make those market rate units, and you know, at that point, the market rate component wouldn't have an income limit, limitation to it. Because there, there are a lot of folks out there that are above that $29,000 range that are you know, in the same predicament that, that somebody lower than that may be as far as um, affordability of a home. And, and that's a market that we're trying to capture as well. And your market analysts tell you that this is an area that would be successful for those numbers? Yes, yes, that's correct. I mean. Um, with the success of, of Gateway and other surrounding properties in Lowndes County and, and, and areas similar to this, um, it's the same market analyst we've been using, you know, for the last six years. 
they haven't missed yet. We, we feel pretty comfortable with the market here in Ohio. What's an idea of the, of the monthly on these units? Monthly rent? Mm -hmm. So on our one bedrooms, I think we're uh, south of uh, 400, just south of 400. On the two bedrooms, um, about 450. And on the three bedrooms, right at 500.